Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question related to the system interactions section on the exam. So this system interactions, I guess it's still technically in the other systems. As we go through the FSBPT content outline, system interactions really encapsulates the evaluation, differential diagnosis, and prognosis for various conditions that affect multiple systems. And so today today is an example. We've got a question that takes you through an example of that. Just before we get to that, though, just a quick reminder, we are starting up our VIP course. So the VIPT course, this is where we take you through, I personally take you through all of the content on the FSBPT content outline. So this includes all of your cardio, your muscular, your neuro, all of your other systems. So we go through practice questions. Uh, we have a whole bevy of written material, study guide. It comes with six practice exams. I mean, really, when you look at the entire scope of the of the VIP course, I think you'll find that it is unmatched. It's often imitated, but never matched. And so I think you'll really enjoy the VIP course. We have extremely good success when it comes to helping people get through the NPT. In fact, I just, uh, just moments ago, just was uh, replying to a message from a student. She had just passed the exam on her sixth attempt. Uh, she'd taken it five, five times and was looking for something to help her get over that last big hump. And so indeed it was the VIP course that pushed her over the top. Uh, and so it's, it can be your story too. If you are e even anxious about passing the exam, you've got to check out the VIP course. It's something that'll definitely take you through all the content, keep you organized and systematically go through everything as you dive in and go through each system on your way to a successful NPTE attempt. So be sure to check that out. We're starting that out next week. In fact, we have a couple of free webinars you'll want to find, you want to join those. I uh, will start that up on the first week of February, February 6th. So be sure to join that. You can find all the information, get all of our freebies over at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. All right, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question for today. Again, a good system interactions type question. Here we go. A child has the following signs and symptoms, bone fragility, shortened stature, thin skin, deformed teeth, blue tinted sclerae, and delayed developmental motor skills. Which of the following diseases is most likely present? So a child has the following signs and symptoms, bone fragility, shortened stature, thin skin, deformed teeth, blue tinted sclerae, and delayed developmental motor skills. Which of the following diseases is most likely present? We've got one, arthrogryposis multiplex congenita, two, herb Duchenne palsy, three, osteogenesis imperfecta, and four, spinal muscular atrophy. So again, the answer options are arthrogry arthrogryposis multiplex congenita, herb Duchenne palsy, osteogenesis imperfecta, and spinal muscular atrophy. All right, so this child has a whole bevy of signs and symptoms. All these lead directly towards the diagnosis of osteogenesis imperfecta. So when you consider what the diagnostic characteristics of osteogenesis imperfecta, the biggest thing is you see the loss of stature and, and the bone fragility, so frequent fractures. Uh, they also have a lot of connective tissues connective tissue issues as well. So easily bruised, they've got uh, severe scoliosis, vertebral collapse, very or extremely thin skin as described in the in the stem of the question, thin skin, kind of a blue tint or blue sclerae that can exist there. Again, it's the connective tissue that's causing most of that. So lots of bony deformities, fragility of skin and uh, of the bones and connective tissue with pretty severe growth limitations. And so this is the classic really the classic presentation of osteogenesis imperfecta. So if you were to look at the x-rays of a child with osteogenesis imperfecta, you would see the signs of frequent fractures, the the poor bone structure, and because of the poor, or the frequent fractures and the poor bone structure, you'd find some pretty significant deformity when it comes to all of the skeletal tissue as well as the, the connective tissue everywhere. These other answer options, it's important to review these as well. So this is a good strategy when you're going through practice questions is to make sure you understand all of the incorrect answers as well. So arthrogryposis multiplex congenita or AMC, this is the presence of multiple congenital contractures. So perhaps the biggest thing you'll see with arthrogryposis 
is the significant contractures, especially of the muscular and connective tissue. So it's not so much in the bony or skeletal tissue. However, these folks typically do have pretty, se pretty severe issues with contractures, hypotonia, telepase equinovarus or clubfoot, oral motor hypotonia, delayed motor development, some pretty significant muscular issues, but not so much the bone issues as you see in osteogenesis imperfecta. Herb Duchenne's palsy or Herb's palsy, this is a brachial plexus injury, typically affecting the upper brachial plexus, C5 and C6. This is where you get the loss of abduction and external rotation, as well as elbow flexion, leaving you in what's called the waiter's tip deformity, where you have the elbow extended, the arm internally rotated, and the hand in flexion. So it's it's like you're reaching behind you to receive a tip, I suppose. So that's the waiter's tip deformity often described in textbooks. But that's Herb's palsy or Herb Duchesne palsy, as it's known in textbooks. And then finally, the last incorrect answer option is spinal muscular atrophy. So spinal muscular atrophy, this is a, a neurogener or sorry, neuromuscular disease. Uh, it's characterized by progressive weakness, wasting of the skeletal muscles. Typically, this is considered a lower motor neuron issue because of its effect to the anterior horn cells, which that's the start of the lower motor neurons. So typically, you get very severe hypotonia, severe and generalized weakness. And because of the loss of the spinal muscles, the muscles around the spine, you'll find that among other skeletal issues, you'll see some pretty significant scoliosis developing here as well. So significant and progressive weakness, wasting of the skeletal muscles, uh, severe scoliosis and collapse of the spine, but not necessarily from a bony deformity. This is again from a spinal muscular atrophy. So it's, it's a neuromuscular disease. We're talking a genetic disease that affects the anterior horn cells. And so therefore with spinal muscular atrophy, you'll see some pretty significant posture issues as well as severe hypotonia and severe generalized weakness. So there you go. This question about osteogenesis imperfecta or brittle bone disease, uh, this is where you have loss of, of really bone structure. And so therefore, you have bone fragility, shortened stature, thin skin, deformed teeth, blue tinted sclerae, lots and lots of issues related to the skeletal and connective tissue. So skeletal tissue is uh, skeletal, your skeletal stru structure and your, connect your connective tissue. All right, so that is your practice question here for today. I hope you enjoy these these sessions. If you do enjoy these practice questions, please just, just take a moment. It only takes a moment. Leave us a five-star review over on Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you have found this podcast so that we can continue to bring it to others around. It really just takes sex. So if this is helpful to you, please do me a big solid and uh, give us a five-star review. All right, we'll come to a conclusion then. Be sure to check out all the other episodes we've got. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Keep a grin on your chin. Happy studying, everyone. Will Crane fist bumps all around, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.